product is being built or designed, it's important to decide what to make it out of. And there are some important questions worth asking in this process. What properties does the material have? Does the product need to conduct electricity? Is it in the right budget? Does it last a long time? Is it strong enough? And does it melt easily? So alloys are a type of material that have some really interesting properties. Most metals are malleable because the layers of atoms are able to slide over each other. Alloys, however, are mixtures of more than one element, one of which must be a metal. So their structure is a lot more randomised. By mixing two elements, the regular pattern of atoms is disrupted, so we can no longer slide the layers over each other. This makes alloys quite often a lot stronger than single metals. So let's look at some common alloys. Steel is a particularly common alloy, and it's made up of iron as well as other elements. It's used in cars, buildings and bridges. We also have duralumin. This has aluminium and copper in it and is used for aircraft parts. Solder is made of tin and copper and is used to join together metal parts. Brass is made of copper and zinc and is used in brass instruments and coins. Bronze is made of copper and tin and is used to make bells, ships and propellers. So let's have a closer look at copper alloys. So firstly, solder. Solders are a range of alloys made from tin and copper. Copper melts at 1085 degrees C and tin melts at only 232 degrees C. So when we combine them and make solder, we can make it melt at around 227 degrees C. So it's really useful to join electrical components. Brass is another copper alloy and resists the corrosion. It's much harder and stronger than copper on its own and does not react easily with air or water. We also have bronze, which is very similar to brass in that it resists corrosion and it's very strong. As well as alloys, we can also have composite materials, which are made from two or more different materials combined with different properties. Some examples of composite materials are reinforced concrete, polycotton, plywood and fibreglass. So let's have a look at concrete. Concrete is made up of small stones known as aggregate <coughs> and cement and sand. The ingredients are held together when water is added. Concrete is quite strong. It can resist being compressed. However, if you bend it, has a low tensile strength, so it will break easily under a heavy load. So we can use reinforced concrete to overcome this problem. Reinforced concrete is when concrete is poured over a metal structure, which has high tensile strength. So combine the two and we have a much stronger material. Ceramic is similarly a different type of material. China, porcelain, glass and brick are all examples of ceramics. They contain both metals and non-metals. They form this giant ionic lattice or covalent giant structure. They're all referred to as non-metallic materials even if they have metals in them. Some properties of ceramics are that they are poor conductors of electricity and heat. They're hard but brittle and they have very high melting points. So in order to make ceramics, we have to go through a quite intense process. Glass is made, for example, by melting sand at very high temperatures. The sand is then allowed to cool, and it forms an irregular giant structure with no crystals in it. Other ceramics are made by heating clay to a very high temperature. Tiny crystals form as the clay cools, joined together by glass. By adding a glaze, the ceramic becomes waterproof. So we need to use our ideas of properties to link materials and their uses. So for example, we first need to think about what properties are needed for the job. So we can think about electrical wires. So the material must be able to conduct electricity. Secondly, we need to think about what else might be a concern. So we need to be able to conduct electricity, but we also need the wires to be strong. And this is applied across the board. We need to think about all the different properties we need and then decide upon 
the type of material we need to use. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Check out more of our content and remember to subscribe to our channel.